Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Maria. Please subscribe below so we can be YouTube friends. Today, I wanted to talk about non-playing characters, a concept of NPCs that exists within this larger framework of the Matrix. What are NPCs if you haven't heard of, of them? Do I believe in them? Do I not? And what is my take on non-playing characters? Okay. Okay, if you have been following me for some time, I channel a lot about the matrix. I do talk a lot about the fact that the nature of the world that we live in is virtual, which does not make it unreal, which does not make it something worth escaping from. In fact, our higher selves really want us to be incarnated right now. And they, quote unquote, paid a lot of money in energy currency in order to bring us here, in order to project forth and have this experience. Um, in one of my past videos, I've also mentioned that there are a wealth of experiences, a wealth of games, so to say, available to us at soul level. So your soul is very deliberate when it chooses where you're going to incarnate, what dimension, what planet, what species, what you're going to experience like from birth. Literally, it's a very controlled experience from point A to point Z. Uh, so what are non-playing characters? Within the concept of the larger concept of the matrix, there are two types of characters that are believed to exist. The first one are players. And players are essentially souls, right, um, that have avatars. So you would have, like, a, in this case, a human vessel, right? And there would be a soul or a stream of the soul um, entering that human vessel um, or any other vessel for that matter. And that would be considered a player. That means that there is somebody on the other side playing the character. Non-playing characters are supposedly characters that are almost like filler uh, or that is how they usually are described. So in order to make worlds, virtual worlds like planet Earth, real two players, um, the architect has come up with a concept of non-playing characters, which essentially is still consciousness. Everything is consciousness. But they are all the people that you see around you that are not players would be non-playing characters, meaning they're part of the matrix. They're um, uh, the energy. <laughs> comes from the matrix to uh, power these characters because everything needs to get their power from somewhere. But technically, there are no souls associated with them. So from you know a particular perspective, there are almost like um, a bunch of empty beings walking around and the beings that belong to the matrix. And this is kind of like the larger theory behind non-playing characters. Now, what I have seen to be true is this. There is a vast library of worlds available uh, for souls to pick from. Like I said, a vast library of experiences for souls to pick from. And um, there is not an unlimited amount of souls in our immediate strata or our immediate, shall we call it, hierarchy of light. Mm, and so there are potentially more experiences to be had than souls to be had. And so when the architect was creating this world alongside source consciousness. Um, they knew that they had to make these worlds very immersive. Um, and so because of that, right, immersive worlds need to have a lot of happening inside of them. Um, so they created multiple rules that would enable the worlds to appear real to any soul um, that chooses to incarnate inside of the world. One such thing is the law of dynamism, for instance. So everything is dynamic and cyclical. Why were the cycles created, right? Such as, I don't know, 24-hour cycle, just to give you some examples, right? Um, seasons, years, all of these are examples of cycles. Why were the cycles created? It's actually a lot easier and faster to program a cycle and just have it go on repeat than trying to create a dynamism in other ways. And so cycles are just a way to kind of hack the system um, for it to appear dynamic. And it's almost like as if it has life on its own, right? Because source consciousness and the architect had to animate worlds for them to feel real. Otherwise, beings like ourselves would be coming into an incarnation and we would never be able to fully lose ourselves inside of the quote unquote illusion. Um, and because of that, uh, we would not be able to get the experiences that we are so craving, and we would not get the learning that we so, so crave. So yes, um, imagine a scenario where 
you go to the remotest part of the library upstairs, and the library contains every single game or you know, story that you could possibly be born into. And you pick up a book on the furthest shelf from the center, and this book is very, like, obscure. <laughs> like, nobody's opened it in, quote-unquote, a million years. And you read the book, you flip the pages, and you're like, oh, this is a fascinating story to be born into. I want to try this out. As a soul, you can do that, even if you're the only uh, person, so to say, only being that opts in into playing a particular story at any given time. In other words, you don't have to go and convince your buddies, your friends, to join with you in an experience. You can just have an experience <laughs> by yourself. Um, because there are a lot of worlds out there that uh, are not popular, shall I say, and because there are a lot of experiences that are very unique or peculiar or uh, marginalized, um, the idea of the non-playing character had to exist because that is yet another way that the architect can animate the worlds and make the worlds around you um, real. Otherwise, what should have happened or what would, would have to happen would be that you could not play a game as a single player. You would need many players uh, thousands of players, perhaps. Otherwise, all the worlds would be empty. And that would be a missed opportunity because truly there are some games that are never going to be popular and it is okay. Um, and then there are some games that used to be popular and, and, you know, then become less popular. And then there are still some souls that choose to play these games. And so the idea of the non-playing character is very real from my experience. However, what I find to be a big trap with people who are going down the spirituality rabbit hole is this. Um, they start thinking that, okay, well, if they're the player and then a lot of people around them are non-playing characters, that means that they are somehow the part of the elite and everybody else around them is dust under, under their feet. <laughs> and that almost rhymed. Uh, actually, I think it did rhyme. And um, I feel like sometimes it is yet another way to justify how you treat others, if that is a suboptimal way. You're like, well, why would I care how I treat this person um, if they're just a non, uh, like a non-playing character? Um, or in other words, sometimes people, you know, when the world misunderstands them or <laughs> when the world, I don't know, like say, say you're on social media, people give you like a lot of bad comments. It's like a cop out to say, hey, these are NPCs, like these are not even real people. I'm, I'm not gonna take what they're saying seriously. Here's what I would like to offer to you as a perspective. Everything in the world is an energy exchange. So when we're saying anything, everything is an energy exchange, if that is true here, right? That must be true upstairs uh, at the level, at the realm, in the realm of the souls, because as above, so below, right? The first hermetic principle. So what does that mean? That means that over there, we also have that concept of energy exchange. Um, when you enter the matrix as a system at soul level, what happens is an energy exchange. The system, the matrix, gives you an experience to be had, and you are meant to pay for that experience. What do you pay? What is the currency, the spiritual currency that I'm talking about? The currency is energy. So your higher self pays, so to say, or donates a portion of its energy to the matrix so that the matrix could create and customize a bespoke experience for that soul. That energy is then used to power all the structures that need to be powered for that soul to have a very beautiful and a very good experience. Think of it in that from that perspective. If you want to go to the theater today to watch a particular musical, somebody needs to pay the actors. <laughs> You know, somebody needs to pay the director all of the good stuff, right? So you buy a ticket and that is your energy exchange, right? And then there are a bunch of spectators and then you can have the show. Same thing here. Same concept applies. In order to get to the show, to the musical, and that is your current life, you have to pay admission. That admission is usually in the form of your energy. You may be asking yourself, well, if I go into this experience and I always pay with my energy, wouldn't I eventually run out of energy? And the answer is, through the process of expansion, there is more energy. Um, there is that concept of physics that there is always a constant um, amount of energy 
in the universe. And that energy just changes forms and shapes. That is the matrix concept that only belongs in the matrix, right? So it is true, but it is only true to a certain degree because at soul level, you indeed can accumulate energy. At soul level, as you expand, you get more energy. As you ascend, you get more energy. As you pass your test, you get more energy. So there is more of you. So the matrix needs to work in a way that when you pay for admission, what you get out of that experience is so much bigger that you can pay for that admission again and again. It would still make sense to your higher self. Now, here's the thing. Granted, on planet Earth, there are a lot of players right now. So there are a lot of characters that, that there are a lot of souls that wanted to show up in this current moment in time. Hasn't always been the case. There has been a time when planet Earth was not a popular game. So what happens usually? Um, when you come in and incarnate, whether the game is popular or the game is not popular, it doesn't really matter. Who do you think powers the non-playing characters around you? The answer is you. If you have come across a non-playing character, especially if they have played a significant impact or role in your life, for example, your college professor, your dance teacher, um, I don't know, your classmate, like people in your vicinity, right? Beings in your vicinity. Say we, we go with this theory of non-playing characters. Somebody has to pony up the energy to animate these beings. And it happens to be you, right? So imagine there are hundreds of thousands of players, right? Um, each of these players is going to be animating a subset of NPCs around their vicinity so that they can have a fulfilling experience. So before you think, okay, these people around me are non-playing characters, they don't have a soul, so I don't care, check in with yourself and realize that if this is somebody who has come into your vicinity, either they are a legitimate other soul playing a game or, and that is the second option, the second answer is they are a part of you and there are no other options here. Do you get what I mean? If your higher self gives its energy to power up 100% of NPCs that are going to be meaningful in your life and in your world, then that means that you are really interacting with yourself over and over and over again. So how you treat others is how you treat yourself. How you treat these NPCs is how you treat your higher self. So think about that. Think about what that means, right? And how you would want to approach these people now, if that is just the projection of your higher self in the same way that you are. And another thing, your higher self always has this grand plan of like, this is what I want to experience. You know, these are the challenges. This is what I want to receive on the other side. This is the expansion that I'm craving. This is the experience that I'm craving. Because of that, they would set up the NPCs around you to be a particular kind of challenger for you or a particular kind of nurturing energy for you. In other words, they are pre-programmed. So how would this happen? Imagine you have a teacher in fifth grade who really gets on your nerves, like somebody who just doesn't get it, seems to hate everything you do, gives you bad grades and really triggers you every which way till Sunday. Most likely somebody like that if they are an NPC, they're powered by your higher self and they were placed by your higher self in order to play this dichotomy with you. Why? And by the way, by the way, in this particular instance, right, like people love, you know, there's, I, I love this victim mentality of like, oh, I'm a victim. I'm like this little student. I'm like, I'm like this child. And, you know, I'm like, I'm innocent. It's this adult that's like doing all the acting up. Very often I see that with people who've had um, like a hard relationship with their parents or th that have had abuse as children. Um, there is a lot of rejection of the fact that there is a reason why abuse may have happened in your life. And that is probably a reflection of a part of your soul, if that makes sense. Right. Oh, I'm going to get so many rotten tomatoes for this. It's like, how dare you blame the victim, Maria? I'm not blaming anyone. In fact, I'll tell you this. All I'm here to do is shine the light. If that doesn't work for you, that doesn't work for you. That is a choice. But here's the deal. The only way you align with an abuser 
is because your higher self has that inside of them to even align you with. So for any victim, anybody who's ever found themselves in a victim position, there is always a paired abuser. And that is not an external frequency to you. So the first thing you need to get clarity on is that if you have found an inner victim in yourself, look for an inner abuser. Because you may have done this in many lifetimes in the past to a lot of other people. And if you haven't done it to a lot of other people, you have done it to yourself. Then you have abused yourself with words, with, you know, thoughts, with all of the above, right? Like you could have just been your own abuser, like that inner critic or like, you know, self-abuse can take many different forms, right? Uh, but inner critic is a form of self-abuse, right? So if you are the victim, think that you're also somebody who is on the other side because there is a reason why things trigger you, right? And that is just another facet of you. So going back to my example, right? In this particular case, when you teach her, you know, they may be a non-playing character, but they're powered by the streak of your higher self that has that abuser in them. And so, yes, they will abuse you to A, shape you, B, also showcase to you that you have this abuser abuser um, and um, victim dynamic going on so you can finally heal it. And once you heal it here, it's almost like codes are starting to go up to your higher self. And that starts removing the little fissures and the cracks in the soul, healing it from upstairs. Once uh, healing it upstairs, once that process is complete, you could never align to the victim abuser archetype ever. That would be quite impossible for you. You would be playing other games. There would be more important stuff for you. There would be more important fish to fry than, you know, pretending to be the victim when you really aren't, right? When that is all said and done for you. So my thought here is this. Treat everybody as if they're real, even if you believe in the matrix, even if you believe in the NPCs. Because the only thing, like, if, 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 not, if that's not a real soul that's staring back at you, it's a part of your higher self or a part of source consciousness or the architect. Like there's really no other option, right? Like what else do you think powers this consciousness? The matrix, and I, I like to, a lot of people think that the matrix is this inanimate thing that is out there to get you. But the matrix is a consciousness first and foremost. It's a system that is so wise and it is a self-learning system that becomes better over time. And so no, it's, it's very far from dead. It's extremely sentient. And I think that there is a, like, we're doing ourselves a big disservice when we're saying, hey, this is, like, these people over here are real, and this people over here are fluff stuff, and they're just filler material. Nobody is filler material. In fact, you know, whatever you attract into your orbit is a specific dead giveaway for any distortion, any disharmony that you carry at soul level. So every person that you meet is a great gift. Every person that you meet is a messenger. Every person that you meet can lead to a highest expansion. And so treat everybody with kindness. Treat everybody with kindness because we're part of the same one source and we shall go to it eventually. Sending you so much love. Please let me know in the comments how you feel about NPCs and I'll see you in the next video. Bye loves.